Nelson with Cascade Media Group and what's up Kansas City and today uh, we have uh, one of our legal uh, people and one of my close close friends my kids godfather Mr. Carl Bussey and we're going to be talking about uh, the decision that went down yesterday and some other issue legal issues that uh, people with melon in their skin I like to say uh deal with on a day-to-day -day basis and that was a victory yesterday but if you practice law like mr bussy you see this going on on a day-to-day -day basis how you doing carl I'm rejoicing and praising the lord and i need a better introduction than that they gave me no background no nothing how long i've been practicing law yeah, like, no, you know? that's what holly but because you don't watch the interviews that's what i do i usually uh, Ask my guests to talk to our audience about uh, how they came about practicing law. Give background: what grade school you went to, high school. Yeah, I, I'm, it, hold it. I'm, I'm, I'm running it down. It's so I let you tell it yeah. so that I don't misstate anything. So uh, let's just get A down now. How long up. have you been practicing law? Yeah. Ah, uh, we don't need that. No, Long yes, time. You, I, as as it it, I was going to go into that, Carl, as it relates yeah. to you uh, knowing what you're talking about when it comes to yeah, the yeah. criminal justice system. And you're not and taking care of your children and taking care of your children for free. That's right. <laughs> oh, yeah, time. Taking yeah. care of Mr. Nelson for free. So, yeah. Uh, <laughs> again, uh, a lot, a lot of local people here in Kansas City, uh, especially in our community, know who you are. But as Cascade Media has evolved and we have other markets, let, let the let the other yeah. folks know who you are, and then let them know where you came from, who your daddy was. Also, I, I'll let them know all of that after the fact. Let's talk about these victories. Let's talk right. about these victories that Black people historically, continuously forever celebrate and that's all we get we never get anything after it for instance malcolm x would always decry that under the constitution white people did not need a 13th 14th or 15th amendment because they already had rights but they had to always give us us right uh in the supreme court decision that decried and said that segregation is no is unconstitutional and that schools should be segregated schools should be immediately integrated with all deliberate speed which they take from the 13th amendment by the way with all deliberate speed well that was in 1954 right schools are still segregated we applauded the victory. Oh, it's great. We got the Voting Rights Act of 1964. We jumped up and down and celebrated. What a victory. But now they're still taking away our Voting Rights Act. So I, what I'm suggesting is it's all well and good to applaud a victory. But we've got to stop just applauding victory and get some substance. Because the criminal justice system is still inequitable. There's still black people in jail who are innocent. There's still black people in jail who can't afford an attorney. There's still black people in jail who can't afford a bond. The criminal justice system is against poor people. You know, if you don't have somebody, you can call and say, represent me and help me out. You might get, you might be able to get a friend to be a lawyer, but you can't get out of jail because you ain't got no money to post a bond. So those inequities, and, and, and they have alternatives to that, by the way. They doesn't have to be like that. Uh, poor people, black people, brown people, Asian people should not have to suffer all these consequences through the criminal justice system. And I would like for us to address that and have an ongoing victory, not just victory now and then. You know, all these cases will not have all these people or uh, the notoriety or uh, the press 
that was in this case, uh, all the money that was spent in this case. I don't have that. I'm talking about the poor people who not even mentioned in the paper. I'm talking about the poor people that are sitting in jail that even though they're innocent, they got to plead guilty to a doggone case just to get out of jail. Plead guilty to something they didn't do. And this is pitiful. This isn't a, a good criminal justice system. It's got to stop. We got to quit applauding victories every now and then and interspersed. We got to start having victory every day. And I'm tired of it. You got any other questions? No, I let me say this. Uh, I'm in total agreement, but I'm uh, taking further. Uh, I'm tired of these uh, shallow victories across the board and everything, not just in the legal right. justice system, uh, especially in the economic uh, parts of people of color's uh, life. Uh, we have people in high positions, uh, mayors, superintendents, and such, but then when you look what the, the things that they're controlling, how does that affect them Black businesses from an economic standpoint, because there's no black power or no power without economic power. And uh, a lot of this stuff is shallow in my uh, estimation. And the only way it can be fixed is the way it was put in place by politicians. But most of our politicians are owned by the corporations and the corporations are owned by the one or the 10% of uh, the people just running the planet. But you can move the needle on all these issues two ways. Either you have money or you have numbers. The people that have money buy numbers through advertisement. And, but we still, if we can come together as people, we have the numbers and you know how Freedom Inc. used to operate i always think about when you was committee man yeah but there, there, there was no meals being served downtown without us being at the table because by the time the majority community fight it out we always had the deciding votes that block of votes and i'm not understanding really on the state level which uh deals with uh, a lot of things in our criminal justice system, uh, why we're not uh, banding together and coming up with comprehensive strategies to change our environment. Yeah, and, and we don't want to, again, we don't want to just talk about it. You know, you're right. We do need to come up with the comprehensive strategies. And after all, we are in capitalism. So money rules. Money, and, and there are continuously now some black billionaires. But the the overall population, the majority of black people are poor. You know, they don't have, that's an exception rather than the rule. So the only power that we have is unity. Right. The only thing that we can do is to come together as one and to operate that way. And as long as they divide, they conquer us. And we're the only minority group, you know, that won't come together, that won't, that won't work for each but, other. But Carl, Carl, because yes. I'm in media, right, and really yes. studied this, uh, we have been indoctrinated, and a lot of us don't want to really understand what that what that means. It's just like having a sex addiction or a drug addiction, or what have you. If you have been indoctrinated with a virus on how you think and how you yeah. see your brother and everything, you the, the greatest thing is that you don't even know that you, you're thinking the way you're thinking about your brother, your sister, economics, education, because you have gone through this indoctrination through the educational system. The slave mentality. Yeah, you have so, a slave mentality. I used to love to go to the back of the bus because I felt that's all right. I used to love to go to the back of the restaurant to get the food because I didn't think we could eat with the white people. I all mean, right. I understand that. Tell my audience where you come from real quick because- Little Rock. Uh, 
Little yeah. Rock, Arkansas. Yeah, run, run that background Fathers. because Orville Fathers and Rockefeller. <laughs> right. be, be, because you're old enough, like uh, the young kids now, uh, yeah. when they see discrimination, a lot of them they feel it in a different way than when you and myself came up, when you couldn't do certain things. I could to a degree because I was living in New York. But when right. I, in the summertime, when I would go down south to my grandmother's yeah. in South Carolina, I seen the chain gangs. I seen the yeah. signs, don't drink water. My cousins yeah. that live down there, the things that happened to Emmett Till. Uh, yeah. A lot of young kids like myself coming from the north, not knowing what's going on down south, per se. You learn real quick. When you go into town and all that, you grew up with that. Run that down. Yeah, but that 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 was the way it was, and that was the same. All I'm suggesting to you is that that that, that was the same indoctrination that we had back then. That's the same indoctrination that they got right now, just in a different form. You know, they still you still got to go to your own places. You still got to go to your own school. I never went to. Uh, uh, integrated school till I was in college. I never, we were scared to go to school with white people because, uh, you know, they had to have soldiers there to protect us. Um, so, I mean, certainly there was progress and, there, and, and I'm talking about the, there was intermittent progress and intermittent victories. But I'm saying in order for us to keep up we got to start having a Floyd victory every day. You know, I what's the- you can have that call unless, the, you're the, willing, yeah. unless you're willing to be honest with yourself. Yeah. Our community has to be honest with who we have involved in and, and, and people uh, want to kill the messenger. I say that the top one third of our community uh, the, the real middle class, and they'll look at this interview even. And right. uh, no, for the most part, that's who's that's who's looking at the educated right. class per se. And when you ask them to look at themselves about what they're truly contributing to the bottom three fourths of our community, which most of their family uh, is included in them numbers. It looks so horrible that they know they are privileged and they're not going to say anything for in, lack of better words, master the system to upset where they might lose their income and they know. Right. I actually, I actually understand what you're saying. And that's one of the problems that we have. And one of the things that, that I'm arguing and just give you a little more background. Uh, as my mother was a school teacher, my father worked for the prosecuting attorney. And of course, my father became the first black mayor of Little Rock. And so I had that. But our parents taught us to help other people. You know, that's the way they raised us. And we had, we had fathers back then who was with their family, no matter what they was doing. They might have been running around doing this, doing that, but they was at home. And we don't have that that family thing now where you have fathers directing the children, making them go to school, making them stay out of trouble, teaching them how to act. And 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 I was in a domestic case and I'm saying, and the, and the mama up there talking about the daddy ain't spit, he don't do nothing, and he ain't, you know, he won't do this. And I'm saying, well, what about your son? Are you saying your son ain't spit either? You know, because you don't want the daddy around him. Is he going to end up if be just like his daddy? Or do we need to change this cycle? And you have him with your son, with him, and teach him and guide him and help him so he won't make the same mistakes he made. We, I, You're right. Uh, you know, they get into the, uh, the Black people at the upper top. They get in those positions, and, and they want to keep that position. And they don't want to rock the boat. And, let and me they don't want to help those poor people. Let me you say know, this. I understand yeah. that. Let me yeah. say this. Because uh, yeah. I got like a, a complex. Because 
I keep harping on this type of stuff. And then it's like, Mr. Nelson is the problem. I'm like, how am I the problem? I'm from yeah. the hood. Yeah. I'm, I, I'm, I'm trying to get to y'all to see, you don't have to lose your status. You can be the spook who sat by the door. You, yeah. you, you come together <laughs> and get a strategy. Unity. Yeah. Unity. I said yeah. numbers or money. Yeah, yeah um, we ain't got the money. Right. We ain't got but the, the money. people with the money, I, yeah. I go into this again. Yeah. Most black people think that they won Georgia or they uh, or, or they flipped Georgia or they got Biden elected. No, no, no. If you know uh what uh the 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 ratings uh people say they say black people are the most uh susceptible people for advertisement so right. the people with money buy advertisement that's why it costs so much money to run they buy advertisement that black people see and they're susceptible to and that gets your butt out to vote when they don't have no a right. lot of advertisement we sit at home. And so the people that have us handcuffed, they understand media. They understand what makes you go buy a Coca-Cola or a bag of potato chips. And right. they treat us like Pavlov's dogs. They put the stimulus out there and we react. But we can- And don't invest it. Hold it, but we, we can counter that. If yeah. we have good leadership, then they, have a strategy for us to vote and do things in a block and show us how it is going to impact our daily lives, our kids' lives. And if all we do is come together and cooperate, we can have a seat at the table. And you were there when you was a kid committee man, you seen that. And I was going to point that out. One of the, the the reason that we ultimately got a black mayor in Kansas City was because what was done in terms of victory by Bruce White. He is what he did that 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 achieved it that they're not doing now that we need to do. Our future and our vision is in our youth. And so what Bruce Watkins did was he removed all them old people in freedom. He said, we're going to have a young freak. We're going to go out and get you. We're going to go out and get our children to start participating right now in, a, in the democracy so they'll understand, be experienced, and learn. Those are the ones that we want to work and go door to door. Let's teach them. Let's not keep it to ourselves because I need unity in order for all these people to get out to vote. You don't see nobody crying out for the kids now, for the youth to change them. We're allowing the, the criminal justice system to train them, to teach them. And we're not teaching them because the fathers ain't in the home because they in jail or somewhere else. And all I'm suggesting is, is that we have to right now, again, know, and I want to say this every day, and everybody, every day that you speak to somebody, you say, what's your victory today? What did we win today? What is our Floyd victory today? Say that every day, you know, until we achieve the success that we're entitled. What do you have to say about the sentencing part of this? I've heard a lot of bander and talk on that, saying you know, well, this is a victory, but it's not a total victory. Again, you know what I'm talking about? That's what I'm saying. That's exactly what I'm saying from, from the, the initial slavery to the 13th, 14th, and 15th Amendment to Brown versus Board of Education where they, they determined that segregation was unconstitutional to the Voting Rights Act. We have a victory one day. But then they turn it around because we don't keep on fighting. We don't stay on. And yeah, I got I got clients for accidental death. We get 20 and 30 years. And they talking about this man gonna get possibly 12 years. You know, 
the unfairness in the sentencing. Yeah, they're going to get that. And then we, you know, they, they, they may come up with a Trump thing. They may come up with a, uh, all of a sudden somebody comes up and pardons him. You know, he, man, we don't get that. You know, we don't get that form of the system. So I'm just saying, we got to start keeping our eye on the well, prize. Hey, I'm, uh, Victory Trump, every day. Trump, Trump, and he may, hey. get, he may get 12 years. Hey, hey, Trump yeah. pardon Kilpatrick, that that boy out of uh, Detroit. Really? Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> that, thanks a lot. That that's a victory for us, right? He, 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 yeah, he also pardoned uh, the rapper too, right? <laughs> Lil Delhi or who else? Yeah, Lil, Lil Wayne, but Lil Wayne wasn't Lil like Wayne. that. <laughs> but I'm just saying, you know, it it it, it didn't do that. But that's much. the system. Hold it. What the, about some the, of the most, people? Hold it. The, the point I was uh, making was fun that. America has become a joke when it comes to the legal system, constitution, and everything. You pointed out yeah. about four different things that are in the constitution that are not even being enforced. That's correct. That's, That's what correct. We've done. And so, and that that has been the same thing with law enforcement. And and do you remember the movie that was done on 13th? Did you see that? Oh, man. That just showed you that even though they said slavery was abolished, they created a new slavery because the exception to that was jail, penitentiary. That was the new slavery. So it's still putting us on the plane. Well, well Bussy, I'm going to end with uh, this. Yeah. Let you make some uh, final closing statements. But our community's got to understand how the world really works. It's like Taco Bell. It's like McDonald's. It's like all your fast food. Taco Bell, they reinvent themselves every year. We got a different taco, a different, same old taco, <laughs> different wrapper, different right. McDonald's. They've been selling hamburgers 50 years. Same old quarter pounder, a uh, different name. We put a different type of sauce on it, but it's all about the marketing and if you're swallowing it uh, as black people and not thinking critical about who's in office, what are they doing? Right. Uh, you're condemning your grandson and great grands uh, to the same uh, vicious cycle that uh, we're dealing with. What's your closing words, Carl? The only thing I want, to, want us to, I want to encourage everybody to reach out to the youth Let's save our children. Let's keep them out of jail. Let's uh, get these innocent people out of jail. Let's work on changing the criminal justice system. I don't think anybody needs to go to jail. I think we need to try to help everybody. And I want you to continue to fight and let's have a victory every day. Be able to go home every day and say, we did something. We have a victory today. Hey, All right. It's a, it's a pleasure having you on the show, Carl. Uh, we got All right. to on a little more often uh, as I close with when you invest in your community, you're really just investing in yourself. Good night. This program is brought to you by Fox Star.